Hello, welcome back to my vlog. My name is Charlotte and I am the Trauma Informed Teacher. The Trauma Informed Teacher is a channel dedicated to helping busy working people, especially teachers, find better work-life balance. I actually had a really good week of teaching last week. Um, I just felt like all of my lesson plans were just hitting right on the mark of what my students needed. They were all like complying with everything. I just felt like I was in the flow last week and it was so wonderful. So let me take you through a week in my life as a teacher. Good morning. It is Monday and I am starting a new vlog. So I'm super excited about today because we are going to make candy in my sixth grade class today. Um, I'm trying to teach them about melting point and boiling point and we are going to make caramels and then I might let another group make stained glass candy because we have all the ingredients that we need for both. So I thought it'd be cool for them to see the difference because yesterday we did some research on it and the kids learned about the different stages of candy making and so um, they understand the difference between like the the hard crack stage and the softball stage and the firm ball stage all of that so it'll be neat to make two different types of candy and of course you know candy's fun because then you get to eat what you make so i'm hoping that that experience will help them lock in the concept of melting and boiling point um one of the things that students have a hard time understanding is the difference between um, melting and dissolving. So that's something that I can kind of address. That's a misconception as well while we're doing it. So we're doing that. Um, my seventh grade is playing Jeopardy, so that'll be easy. They're reviewing for their um, assessment, their unit assessment in physical science. And the eighth graders are working on some articles. Um, I taught them a protocol yesterday. It's called the four A's protocol. So I've been having some issues with some of my students um, not being nice to each other, not being nice to teachers, um, just talking about the idea of respect and what it looks like. Um, so that's why I did my video on ideas for respect to show what I'm doing in my class because I know something that a lot of teachers are struggling with right now. Um, students lost some of their social capabilities during COVID and we're trying to get their maturity levels back up to where they're supposed to be for their age group. Um, but I think teachers all across the nation are struggling with that right now. So I'm doing a reflection on which kind of scenario is respect and which is not so they're classifying and I'm going to use some like examples that don't have anything to do with us first but then I'm going to slide in some real classroom situations without any names that the students will recognize as things that have happened in the last few days in here so they will be forced to confront is that respectful or is that disrespectful so yeah that's what I have on my plate for today I'm going to get my SEL work ready and then I will check back in with you later on. Hopefully I can get a little bit of footage since I'm demoing of the candy lab because um, it's really a lot of fun. Every time we do it, the kids really love it. I haven't done it in a few years because of COVID. You know, you don't do food stuff when you're in the middle of a pandemic. <laughs> um, we were trying to stay six feet apart. So yeah, it's been a few years since I've done it. So looking forward to that lab today and hopefully it won't be too crazy since I'm demoing it. So yeah. All right, I'm gonna let you go and I will come back a little bit later. So it is my planning time. I have been working on a couple of things. First of all, we had to put our students into groups because our eighth graders are getting ready to go over to the high school and kind of like tour for their transition into high school next year. I set up my um, Jeopardy game. 
I like to use Jeopardy at the end of my units to review before we take our unit assessment. And I've found that there's so many Jeopardy templates that are out there. I'll link the one below that I'm using for um, electric circuits and um, conductors and insulators because we just finish up our energy unit. Um, and my students have done a lot of work with like potential and kinetic energy, but this was like our last section. So I'm going to focus the Jeopardy on review of the stuff that's a little bit um, newer to them. So we're going to do that today. And I love it because the Jeopardy template, um, I just went in and I literally Googled Jeopardy um, and whatever I'm working on. So this was... Um, electricity and then or I put in electric circuits and this is what came up and all this is already set up and so you can put in um, when you go back this is what it looks like at the beginning that's what I googled and it came up right away you can change the number of teams you can um, edit your teams to put names in and everything so when you start it You have all of the numbers, the questions get harder as you go down. And when you click on a question, it comes up. And then if you hit the space bar, it reveals the correct answer. So, and then you can come down here and you can add points. If you hit plus, it'll automatically give that team um, the points for whatever it was. And you can adjust it too, if you make a mistake. So it's pretty cool. It's all there for you and yeah, you just, go in and use it and it's awesome. So I'm gonna restart this now. There we go. So now it will be ready for the seventh graders. Two seventh grade classes that need to do that today. I'm gonna to pass back out their notes so that they have them because they'll be allowed to use them on the exam as well. And then my sixth grade class is the crazy one today. So I'm gonna read through the recipe with them um, and then we're going to do that up front. So I'll have to set that up in just a second. I want to run to the bathroom real quick so that I don't have to be concerned about that. My students come back in about 25 minutes to 30 minutes. So I have a little time still, but I want to show you what I was working on for my eighth graders the four A's protocol and we just talked about this in one of our trainings um, it's a way for students to look at articles and right now we're doing um, we're, we're doing some articles from news ELA or newsella whatever you call it on water stewardship because my students are at the end of their um, hydrosphere unit so we're talking about taking care of our water water quality standards things like that and this article is on nurdles which is like little pieces of plastic that have been found in our water sources um, we're going to use the four a's protocol which i taught them yesterday and we did an article together so they split their paper into four sections and then each section has a purpose, so they're, they write assumptions, agree, argue, and aspire in each corner. And then the students, as they're reading, have to write down one thing um, that I'm aware of as they're reading um, for each of those ideas, and it gives them something to talk about. So this is a scaffold for critical thinking and can really um, get your class started on a lot of great discussion. So we're using that as like a capstone experience and then um, to kind of think about everything, put it all together, what we've learned about ecosystems, what we've learned about the different um, ecosystems in freshwater versus saltwater, the different zones of the ocean. We're putting it all together with this little capstone discussion experience and I'm breaking my students off in groups so that they can have some good discussion about these articles and then I'm going to put some of my high flyers together on the more difficult um, or complicated articles so that that will give them a challenge. In my other groups, I'm going to kind of do a good balance. So I have strong readers and then students that might need um, some reading support. So yeah, that's what I have planned for today. I'm going to take a second to go to the restroom. Then I'm going to set up my lab for sixth grade because my seventh grade and my sixth grade will like flow right together and I won't have a lot of time. So... Yeah, and then I need to pull something for intervention. I'll have eighth graders today. We've been working on word morphology. So we're using the coach books 
as a way to go over what we've been learning, but I'm stopping them and talking about words that are in there um, because one of the things that I've realized my students have the biggest problem with when it comes to testing is the language, the vocabulary, breaking down words for reading. Um, they get stumped on reading the questions and reading the answer choices, and that's why they miss the questions, not because they don't know the content. So that's what we're doing today. And I'm going to let you go so that I can get started on setting everything up. Well, I don't know. Hold on. Yeah. Okay, so we lined the parchment. So read number two for me, please. Um, Jasmine, you want to read two? Wait, so they're drawing what they see up here, all the ingredients. Draw the setup. Draw what you see up here in your notebook. Not the ingredient. Oh, I'm sorry. I can't hear Jasmine reading the instructions. Read it again, sweetie. Thank you. So sticky. Harrow syrup. Uh huh. Okay. Thank you. Okay, so we're going to put butter and sugar in here, right? How much sugar am I putting in? Four cups of sugar? Yep. Okay. All right, so that means that Zachary, come up and you can measure one cup of sugar. Come up here and measure one cup of sugar. This is granulated sugar. When they say granulated, they mean the regular white table sugar. All right, does anybody know what we need to think about when we measure the sugar? How do we measure sugar properly? Karan, what do we need to remember when we're measuring with measuring cup? How do we measure properly? Can you explain it? Come up here. He's in cooking clubs with me, so he knows, and Nyquan knows too. Explain what we have to think about. Turn around and tell the class. Here, use this to help you. What are you going to do? And then when we put stuff in there, how do we know that we have enough? Uh, Well, we are home. Um, it was a good day today. And I got a lot of good quality teaching in. The students loved the caramel um, experiment, lab, whatever you want to call it. And I do think that they're going to remember the vocabulary now after doing that. Um, the eighth graders did a really good job working with their protocol today. And although they were kind of crazy for the last 15 minutes, <sighs> speak of crazy. Hold on. Baxter, Baxter, come here. What are you doing? He's nuts right now. Um, because when we came home, we found that he dug in the trash can and found the coffee grounds. So um, I think he may have chewed on some because he's running all over the place right now. The other day um, we got message saying that he got out and he has a containment system and a caller, a wireless caller, and he's always been really good about staying around the house during the day. We like to let him run outside because we have a big yard and we want him to get his exercise while we're gone during the day. So it's nice that he can be outside, but we got a message the other day that he was at the neighbor's house. So apparently either he didn't have his collar on right or something. 
and he was able to get through the containment system and he ran to the neighbors and we live on a road where there's like farm equipment and stuff like that. So, you know, we can't have him doing that. So today he stayed in the house and so now he's crazy. So I just finished cutting up all the caramels and the students are going to eat them today in my sixth grade class. Um, for my seventh grade class, we are doing this um, review guide over electricity and circuits. I found it online, really cute. Um, I do think uh, it was one that I had to pay like a couple dollars for. Um, so I'll link it below, but you'll have to buy it um, in order to use it. But I just really liked it. It was simple and it covered the things that I needed to review with my students um, in a clear, clear way and not overwhelming. Um, so we're going to do that. Their unit test is tomorrow. And um, my sixth graders also, I think I'm going to do some um, word work with them today on their properties and matter words to um, kind of help them break their words apart for reading and hopefully that will help them with answering questions in writing. My eighth graders are gonna do a little exploration of the Coastal Studies Institute today. We're gonna to go online and look some of, at some of the data that's available for water quality in our county and uh, make some like deductions based on the data compared to other places and compared to like the standards. So uh, like for clean water. So yeah, we're gonna do that today and um, kind of sticky because cutting up those caramels was like not a super easy job. <laughs> but it's done. Good morning. Today is Friday, February the 24th, 2023. And I'm sitting here eating some pretzels for breakfast because I don't know. Um, I don't know if it's that I was in the sunshine yesterday. And sometimes in the wintertime I have like low vitamin D and then if I'm in the sun then I will sleep really super hard the next day but this morning I was having a hard time like waking up not that I was tired just that I was in a deep sleep and sometimes I struggle with brain fog in the morning when I'm first waking up for the first like hour to two hours um because that's like part of fibromyalgia um it affects your sleep cycles and I take medication to help me sleep better and not have like um, restlessness in the evenings um, just to relax. Um, and it's like a pain. Basically, it's just a um, type of like muscle relaxer, I guess. Um, and I got plenty of sleep last night. But this morning, um, basically like the brain fog in the morning is a fibromyalgia symptom and you know, it's just like kind of a random thing. I'm actually been, I've been feeling very good lately. Um, I'm taking good care of myself. I haven't had much, like I haven't had many symptoms over the last year. Um, I'm just, you know, I know when I start to feel a certain way that I need to get more rest or that I need to supplement my diet. Um, like I've learned a lot of natural things to help with it. 
but sometimes it does weird things like this morning when um, my body just really needed to process, I guess, the vitamin D that I gave it yesterday because I sat outside with my students during my last class and got a lot of sunshine, which was really good for me. But then it was like I was ready to go to bed. We went out to dinner last night. And when I got home, it was like 730 and I started getting ready for bed and I just laid down in bed and I, I laid there for like an hour and a half and just sort of like did random things, scrolled and watched some YouTube videos for inspiration and made a couple of shorts. And then, um, I just went to sleep like really super early and I slept really hard. So anyway, um, it's just one of those unpredictable things. So I'm trying to wake up. I'm having some carbs. <laughs> Does it help? But I'll let you go. Here's a little outfit of the day. I got my autism awareness shirt on. Love the colors. Super, super cute. And it's Friday, so I am wearing jeans.